Do y'all remember Oswald Bates? Y'all might not even have remember his name, but he was a character um, on in Living Color, uh, obviously played by Damon Wayans here. And the thing about Oswald is he was this guy in prison, and it's obvious that all he did all day was read dictionaries because he would just string completely random long ass words together to make a sentence to try to sound intelligent. And so every time I listen to T.I., every single time I listen to T.I., all I think about is Oswald and how he would just use his fingers and he would just like put words together. The falsity of the duplicitous, you know, all this bullshit. And so I was thinking about (laughs) Oswald yesterday when I was watching T.I. and Tiny on the second half of the Red Table Talk. Now, you know, the first half aired last week and it obviously had everything to do with T.I. putting his daughter's Deja's business out there and trying to basically explain it or double down on what he said. Now, but this week had everything to do with the relationship between he and his wife, of course, Tiny, Tamika. And at first, when I, so I've watched this episode three times, three times, because I really wanted to get, into each person's side I wanted to immediately of course jump on T.I. as soon as I went in this I went into this episode wanting to just go at him not for the whole word stuff because that's just T.I. but simply go at him because I just knew I was going to hate whatever he said then after watching it a couple times I decided I can't be mad at him And I'm not mad at him for anything that he said that came out of his mouth. Simply because what I realize is that everything that's happening in their relationship and everything they're speaking on has everything to do with what Tiny decided she could tolerate. And this is not me really wanting to go in on Tiny because we've all been there. We've been a fool way too long when it comes to men we have all played the fool at some point or another and if you a man you may have played the fool for a woman but a lot of us women have played the fool for much longer than we should have and so for that of course I wanted to feel bad for her and I've always felt bad for her to an extent I honestly I've always felt bad like man this woman, you know she's such a good woman why can't why is he such a clown she's such a good woman And then I watched this episode and then I decided to watch it a second and third time. And as I was watching it, I was kind of taking some mental notes as I was watching it. And there were a lot of things that came up in this episode. And I really implore you to watch it. That made me realize T.I. is not a villain here. He's not, he should not be the villain because everything that has happened has happened on Tiny's watch and she knew about it and she allowed it and she allowed it and allowed it and allowed it. So when do we put some of this responsibility in her lap for how he is? Because he's never really changed. Now, let me start with a few things that I noticed as I was watching this. First things first, when the episode starts, uh, Jada immediately starts talking about how, you know, congratulating them on being together for about 20 years or so. And then he was like, yes, we've been together for almost 20 years. We've been together for 19 years. That immediately had me like on alert, like, wait, pause for a minute. Wait, 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 20 years, almost 20 years. Well, Messiah, that's T.I.'s oldest, is 20 years old. Deja and Damani are both 18. So what's really going on here? If you guys have been together for 19 years, did you get together with him, Tiny, when he had two women pregnant? Because remember, he had he had two kids at the same time, like months apart. So were you with this man and got with this man with a small child, that would be Messiah, and two women pregnant? That right there told you who T.I. was. Now, that doesn't mean that a person can evolve, that they can't change, but that right there was her first red flag when it came to T.I., about who he was and what kind of man he was and how he moved around. That right there, that 
Then she goes on, they get into, uh, Jada starts, you know, talking about their relationship. And I hear, I remember Tanya saying something about the fact that they were supposed to get married in 2007. Obviously it didn't work out. And, and, um, T.I. immediately starts saying, oh, I don't remember that. I don't remember about getting married. I don't remember that we were supposed to get married. I mean, he was very dismissive, very dismissive. Then she goes on to say, you you know, <clears throat> after, you remember, T.I. had a couple of cases against him. Remember, he went to jail for a minute. She said, after his first case, Tiny was like, are you going to marry me or not? Now, mind you, they had been together for almost, what, about seven, eight years or so? After first, she was like, are you going to marry me or not? I, I've been a good woman to you. So that in itself was like, okay, I've invested this time. I've shown you, I've proven my worth to you. I put up with all of this. I put up with the cases. I put up with the babies. I put up with the cheating. Are you going to marry me? I've proven myself to be a good woman. Why haven't you married me yet? Now remember, <clears throat> and yes, I did put that little clown wig on her on purpose. Uh, remember, he went off to jail and she did the, the Toya and Tiny or Tiny and Toya show. Remember that? And remember, he was in his feelings, <clears throat> pardon me, he was in his feelings about her doing that show because if you guys don't know this, Tiny had a career long before there was a T.I. Of course, she was a part of Escape. They were very, very, uh, you know, um, just, just they, they were well known. They had a lot of hits. They were doing really well. She also co-wrote No Scrubs. So Tiny had her own money. She had her own thing going. But it, you know, when she got with T.I., she started to kind of take a back seat to that. And she explains that on the Red Table Talk with Jada. <laughs> how he didn't like her doing all that stuff. How he didn't like her working. And that, you know, he was like, well, no, we had this arrangement, you know, and all this other stuff like that. And it was just interesting to watch the, the body language between them. Because she seemed to bristle every time he talked. He would talk over her. He would speak over her. She would roll her eyes. But no matter what, all these things that he's done and all the stuff that he said, including the fact, if you might remember, he said something about that marriage steals a man's masculinity. I mean, he said a lot of things, a lot of stuff that made you think this man doesn't even want to be married. Tiny filed for divorce two times and two times decided to pull back on it. And yet people are upset with T.I.? Like, I was one of those people that just wanted to jump down his throat about it. You know, and say, well, again, you know, I know <clears throat> I know how it is to be in love with somebody and you just want them to see your worth and you want to, you want them to see the best in you and this stuff like that. But it's at, it's at some point where you realize this man has been the way he has been. And he made it perfectly clear that I, this is who I am. I'm old. I'm set in my ways. I'm impatient. I'm stuck in my ways. I'm too old to be trying to start over. That right there would have got me in my feelings if he said some mess like that to me. Like, I'm too old to try to start over. Like, listen, we're going to be stuck together because I'm too old to even try to do this again. I mean, that, it was just a lot of stuff in this conversation that made me think to myself, why is she even still doing this? You will even hear in the audio I'm about to play when Jada asks, Jada will ask uh, both of them why they decided to stay and all this other stuff. When she asks Tiny why she decided to just pull back on the divorce, and she said, well, because he changed. And he kind of looks at her like, when did I change? How did I change? Like, he doesn't even acknowledge that he did change. So that it's almost like she is projecting what she wants him to be, and he's basically, no, 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 I'm still the same dude. So that's why it's like, it's hard for me to feel sorry for her much more. Like, I, I feel like I've given her a lot of pity, like, wow, this is a strong woman, all this other stuff. But it comes a time where it's like, okay, enough is enough. I don't want to blame him anymore for what happens in this relationship. Because again, she is the ringleader of the circus. He's the circus and she is the head clown. It, it, it just, it's, that's just how I feel. Okay. And like I said, We've all been there. We've all been the clown to a circus before. But when do you, when is enough enough? You had to not only file for once, but you filed twice. This man has been out with multiple women that she acknowledges this, all of this. He says he's stuck in his ways and he don't want to start over again. You know, and then he tries to, of course, 
backhand compliment her. Well, you know, this is the love of my life. This is my best friend, you know, the best sex I ever had. Yet he was out there having sex with other women and trying to use his Oswald Bates words to kind of like clean it up to make it sound pretty. But like I said, I'm just not, I'm just not upset with him anymore about that. But that's just me. That's just me. I want you guys to go ahead and listen to this audio and you tell me what you guys think. What changed that you decided not to take her up on that divorce? You changed something in your mind. Okay. You did? Yeah. All right, so we're going to talk about what changed in your mind. Okay. Y'all both went off and found y'all could have made lives. Everybody mm -hmm. went out, had some fun. I couldn't. Okay, but well, let's talk about okay. that. You could have gone out in the world and found yet another woman mm -hmm. who could have come into your life and been like, oh, Tip, I'm just here for you. What you want? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You're lying. <laughs> you're lying. You're lying, you're lying, you're lying, but I'm going to enjoy it while it lasts. Okay. Yeah, you found several of them. Okay. That's fine. And so, but but here's the but thing. But I he didn't came stick back. it through with not one. But you came back. I want to know why. Because what this is the love discover? of my life. No, 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 no. <laughs> what did you discover okay. out there, Tip? Because, yes, she's the love of your life. Absolutely nothing. But you went and you... I you had your fun. I discovered absolutely nothing. Did you discover, like, all right, this is fun, but this ain't my life? I discovered this. This woman don't have my kids. Th listen, this these, is not the woman I want to spend Christmas is, with. This is where I have had the best times of my life. There are jokes and memories and things that we share that no one else are a part of or are involved with. And nobody could would ever be able to, even if what am I, 39 now? If I were to start today, mm -hmm. I'd have to be 59, 60 years old before. I don't want to wait that long to have this level of a connection. And I think that, you know, it's very rare where you are able to be married to the best friends you have and the best sex you've ever had. Right. You know what I'm saying? So when you have those things. You got them two components? Well, Damn. See, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> You don't, you don't just, you don't just toss that away. Right. In any negotiation, in any deal, business or otherwise, never get what you deserve until you show you're willing to walk away. So is that what it took? For both of us. She yeah. showed she was willing to walk away. I think I got her to, you know, see things from a different perspective because she saw that I was willing to walk away. Tiny, what made you decide to take the divorce papers off the table? That's a big step. You can think yeah. about wanting to get a divorce, but actually going to a lawyer's office, mm. get some papers drawn up, mm. and yeah. get him and not served. Yeah. And what did make you decide that you didn't want to be divorced? It was you. What changed? He changed. He How came did I back. Change? You changed. You changed. You came back as if you really wanted to work things out. You really wanted the relationship. Like before, it was kind of like, oh, the grass is green over here. So that's what I'm doing until I guess you figured out it wasn't. Right. Well, it ain't had nothing to do with the green grass. Yeah, it ain't I think had a to lot do of it has to do with the, it the grass. It didn't have nothing to do with the green grass. <laughs> if you recall, I don't want to say. Grass is green or where you water it, baby. I don't want to say, <laughs> but, well, obviously, what, what brought you back? Because you were out having fun. And let's take on record. I never, ever, ever, ever on record had sex with anyone other than you while uh -huh. we've been married. Okay, well, I have never, ever, ever lied about this on the <laughs> table talk, and I'm not going to do it So, now. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the real, you know okay. what I'm saying? Like, I've been out, you seen me out with people, we've never had any sexual encounter, any, ever, so. This is another thing that I feel, right? So. All right, so that's enough of that. <clears throat> I think you guys get the gist of that. And like I said, I would encourage you to go ahead and watch the full episode. I think it's worth it. Um, and like I said, you know, I, I've always admired Tiny for what she was able to do as a businesswoman and for herself. It's just sad sometimes when we lose ourselves in a man and it happens. She did not invent that. It does happen. It's just sad to me to see how insecure she is with him that she has allowed so many things to take place 
in her relationship to the point that I'm just like, okay, when do we start again putting some of this in her lap and stop blaming this man solely for everything? Because he couldn't have done all of this without her assistance. He could have went out there and had all kinds of women, which he obviously did. But eventually she decided, well, you know what? That that's okay. That, you know, I still want this. I still want to be with this man, even though again, he's proven time and time again, he's not worthy of the kind of love she was attempting to give him. Do I think that T.I. genuinely loves his wife? I do. I think that he loves Tiny. I think that he admires some kind of strength in her and what, what he sees as strength in her. And that means he sees in this, he sees this ride or die. He sees this woman as willing to just go that extra mile and, you know, ride off the cliff with him. And that's what he loves about her. Now, some people would find that to be an admirable strength. Some people would also see that as a weakness that she's willing to do whatever and to take whatever he throws at her. She's still going to be down for him. But I think that's why he loves his wife. I do believe he loves her. And I think they'll be together. I don't see them, you know, they've already done this twice and nobody really takes them serious anymore as far as like breaking up and all this stuff. So I think that they'll definitely stay together. And I also think that this was cathartic for her to sit down here and have like an audience to people to really listen to what she was saying, even though he kept cutting her off. But um, I don't know. I just, I... I don't, I no longer like want to just jump down his throat when it comes to this whole marriage thing. I'm going to jump down his throat when he did to his daughter, Deja. But for this marriage stuff, I no longer feel the need to jump on T.I. about that because he has a very willing participant in Tiny. And I do feel like she needs to take some responsibility for this, how this man acts and what he's been allowed to do. Cause he didn't have, he didn't do it all by himself. So that's what I got out of the Red Table Talk on the second episode. Like I said, I think it's a good episode. I think you should check it out. I'm going to go ahead and post the link to the episode if you haven't watched it yet. Tell me what you thought of this episode of um, T.I. and Tiny sitting down with Jada Pinkett Smith and her mother talking about their marriage and what did you get out of it? Uh, Let me know what you think. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys on the next video. Take care.